Denmark as well, so we are at the design team for Swapo. And today we will be talking about when different types of digital sign up for digital curation. And as you see, this is our museum located in uh, in a town called Kolling in Denmark. It's like two hours drive from Copenhagen. And in, in Denmark, that's a long, long distance. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, Lina, I'm the collection manager at the museum, and here we have. Yeah, my name is Fia, and I'm the head of communications. And uh, now we'll be talking a little bit about an exhibition that we'll actually be opening on Friday. And when we first prepared this, it was, it was supposed to have opened there uh, a month ago. But uh, <laughs> hey, now you'll be the first to, to hear about this. <laughs> the first thing that's going to talk a little bit about uh, the, the museum come from. Yeah, and who we are, and then uh, show you some pieces from our collection. So, um, Trapwell, this museum. Uh, the museum is from 1988, but our collection is from uh, 1900 and uh, up to today. And as you can see, we have a nice collection of sculptures and uh, paintings, and a, a really big uh, collection of Danish uh, modern uh, furniture. Here you see Werner Pelton. Um, we are located at the sea uh, in Kolding. Uh, and uh, we also have, maybe you know him, uh, the Danish architect called Arnest Jacobsen. Yeah, uh, we have it somehow uh, at our museum as well. So we have this great collection of architecture, uh, furniture, sculptures, and uh, And uh, these years we're really uh, specializing in the cross field between art and uh, design. So here you see uh, a big sculpture by Nick Cave, the American artist. Um, and this is our field right now, uh, specializing in, uh, in the cross field between art and design. Yeah, and the favela chair. We have primarily a Danish collection, but sometimes we, we uh, collect the international furniture as well. Yeah, ceramics. And now we will be talking more about this uh, exhibition we open next week. Because you think, well, why, why do we spend time telling you about the exhibition we have at Trapwell? Well, that's because the exhibition we open now and on Friday is actually going to be designing for, for three years. So uh, in some way, it's actually sort of a, a branding project for the, uh, for the museum. Um, and uh, what we've done is that uh, with the, we, we're opening an exhibition we call Your Exhibition. And the whole idea is that people are supposed to curate for themselves. So uh, the, 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 uh, when you walk into the gallery, you will see 200 of uh, Trapphouse's best uh, art pieces. So they, it is an actual art uh, art exhibition, but uh, but then it's uh, tied with it, or it's combined with a digital layer so that you can uh, curate for yourself. You will you'll see that in a, mo in a moment. So this is the, the campaign we've been doing. I'm sorry, we only have it in Danish, but the, the, the wording is, uh, uh, does this favela uh, chair go into the exhibition? Does this uh, modern Lübner uh, jar go into your uh, exhibition, or does this Anne Jacobsen's uh, egg chair go into your exhibition? So that's the, sort of the whole idea. We invite people to to to, to do their own curation, and uh, it all springs out of a, a very uh, genuine wish to uh, to put art uh, close to people. We say we say here, art can bring new insights, personal growth, commitment obsessed for life and well-being when we, when you see an institution facing practices head and invites guests into the process of curating. So that's actually quite big words, but, but we believe that. We believe that you can actually be touched when you when you are close to art and when you live when you, when you have a relationship to art. Um. Um, so the idea is yeah guests will be curating their own exhibitions. Um, that means that they're going to have a new way of experiencing art and design. Um, and, and, and basically, what we are doing is that we are empowering the audience. So, so instead of, uh, of it being the curator that decides uh, what are the guests going to look at, now it's the guests themselves. And uh, what, what actually happens is that the, the guests walk into this uh, exhibition, and then they see all these items, and then they're invited to pick out their favorite pieces. So it's just like when I go to an art museum with my kids and they're a little bit bored because, oh, I'm going to take them down the into this museum again. And then, then, I, then I ask them, hey, hey, look for your favorite piece. Which one do you prefer? Which one do you, do you want to take home? So it's actually the same idea. So we ask the, the audience to find their own favorite pieces. 
this is not something that we've just invented just last year. This is something that we've actually been working with, or the museum has, has been working with for, for 10 years. Um, for 10 years, uh, we've, done, we've done different kinds of pre uh, projects, uh, again, asking people to, to, to look at the, at the art pieces uh, from their own perspectives. So the idea is to, to use people's own perspectives on an art. So instead of, uh, again, the curator, people have to, if, if they can re re refer to their own memories or their own summer holidays or whatever. So that actually means that they look at the art pieces in a, in a very different way. They get these uh, new and, and personal ideas. We had an exhibition back in 2010 called something like What Has Art Ever Done For Me? Um, and and this, is a, this is actually the analog cousin of what we are launching on Friday. Because this is not digital in any way. Uh, it, it might look as if there's a, an iPad here, but it's actually before we had iPads in our museum. So it's, a, it's very analog and it's a, people were just asked to, to fill in small pieces of paper and, and to put them on, on the board. Um, and now here's a, I'll try and see if this works. This is sort of the, the instruction video on, on, on what to do. There isn't, yes, if it works. Maybe it works. We have it on the stick, so we can Welcome to the new stilling. Ud fra et maleri, som Traphold har valgt, skal du sammensætte eller kuratere 10-12 værker, som skal indgå i din egen udstilling. Okay, du samler, designer, og deler udstillingen. Museet bygger en udstilling op omkring et element i kunstværkerne. Det kan være farve, motive, periode eller noget andet. Formålet er at skabe en rød tråd igennem værkerne. Med din udstilling bliver du kurator. Se på det udvalg. De, eller hvilken stemning bider du mærke i? Hvad synes du skal være omdrejningspunktet for din udstilling? Yeah. So the idea is that when people come into the gallery, they see this huge painting, and then we ask them to look at the painting from uh, eight different angles. That could be the period. That could be the, the, the motives on the, on the actual painting. It could be uh, the technique. So we ask people, how do you actually look at this painting? And then I say, okay, the, the easiest way of doing this is actually to, check, to, to, to choose color. So they say, okay, there's a lot of blue in this painting. I'll go for blue. And then they'll walk around and then they'll probably pick a lot of blue uh, uh, items. And in the end, when they come to the last gallery, they are invited to, uh, to sort of uh, realize their exhibition in, in a big scale on a huge uh, screen. So it's actually a combination between looking at real art pieces and then working with it on a, on a digital uh, screen at the same time. about because there is this uh, difference between looking at the pieces and then you have the digital layer. So uh, how does this work together? Yeah, and the question is, uh, could this uh, just as well take place at the purely digital level? Yes, it could. Uh, it's like a sustainable tool. Every museum can use this. Uh, the objects can be changed. You can do it uh, online, like a virtual exhibition. So what is the importance of uh, your authentic uh, object? Uh, uh, I think they have a, a different uh, potentiality. Uh, right now, since it's uh, opening on Friday, I can only guess, but we are doing a lot of observations uh, whether this question, uh, uh, whether the, the, the objects have a potential for the, the digital economy. Um, because we have this digital uh, possibility to make it a personal um, uh, experience for, for, the, for the guests. But uh, at the same time, we want them to look at the, the real objects and the, uh, the, the material qualities. So, will the guests be able to do that? Um, well, if you uh, think about it in a phenomenological view, perception is all about your bodily uh, interaction with the body, with the object, sorry. 
uh, they are not dead anymore. You see the object as a as a perception today. Um, so whether or not there's a different uh, experience, that's that's one of the research questions we have uh, more. Uh, but I'm uh, wondering whether or not the guests even notice the difference today because we have our tablets and our phones with us all, uh, with us all the time. So, um, like your project, does it, uh, you know, we are used to our mobile phones and our digital uh, uh, gadgets, so can they operate with both digital uh, objects and authentic objects at the same time? Uh, I'm sorry I don't have the answers yet, but that's some research questions anyway. Yeah, and then another, peak, another part of our, our research is going to focus on, on how are we going to communicate this exhibition. Um, with this, uh, this quotation in to say that even mass communication pressure cannot influence a person who has no need for communication. So what it basically is, the idea is that, that you cannot, there is no needle theory that you can press this into people and then now you have to learn about art and appreciate art because it's really, really nice. Um, this doesn't work, but the, but we kind of that's that's the intention because we really have this general idea that we want to we want to get people to appreciate art more. Um, so how do we communicate effectively to different kinds of, of audiences? Um, well, that is what we are. What we have been doing is that we have worked uh, very much to find the right, uh, the right uh, look and feel with the with the campaign and the posters. To sort of been very, uh, it was very important to us to have the art pieces on the poster so that we actually uh, do show that this is about art. So not not a representation of art, but the real art pieces. I think it's a beautiful idea to have the city. Plastered with the uh, with posters, with art pieces, uh, so that you sort of this is, this is what it's about. We want to we want to communicate the, the art, um, yeah. And uh, we, so we have the maybe we have the, the exposure, maybe we get the awareness, and, and and let's see if there's also going to be a recalling effect. That's of course what we're going to be looking into afterwards. Uh, we've been using different uh, familiar channels of external communications, like newsletters, posters, uh, postcards, and ambassadors. Um, and of course, we, the idea is to, to sort of uh, repeat the, the message uh, outdoor to sort of people keep people uh, ex being impo exposed to this to this uh, uh, message. Um, and then we also think that we're going to be a, be a, a work with a piece of su a surprise. So, so for this project, we've actually uh, launched a big uh, website strategy, uh, or sort of Facebook strategy, so that. When you have actually uh, made the, ex uh, the, the way you made your exhibition, then you have the, the chance to, to share your exhibition with uh, with your friends. Um, what we've then also done is that one four four times a year we're going to take one of these uh, 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 in one of the, the, the customers' exhibitions and, and look at them and then say, okay, which one do we think is the best? And then we're going to realize it as a real exhibition within the exhibition. And that was actually something we discussed a lot because we were, first we were thinking, oh, the first idea was that we want to, to choose the exhibition that gets the most likes because that was sort of the, the, the good idea. But then we said, no, 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 we have to, to do this what, what we as a museum think is the best. So, so that's what we worked with. Um, uh, a little bit about our segmentation model. Uh, because we've worked with our audience, audiences uh, since uh, 2007, uh, we have this uh, segmentation model that sort of uh, puts our audience into four different boxes. So uh, it has uh, there's a, there's a, uh, a level here working that people people who are mostly uh, attracted to the artworks, and there's a level here with people who are more concerned about socializing within the museum. And then there's a line here with people who uh, prefer to watch at an arm's length distance, and then there's the people who, who, who prefer to touch. And we have uh, put them into four boxes. So we, we have a, a people here we call the investigators. They are the ones who, who really want to read the text and who really are engaged and they, 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 they feel, and whenever there's a button you can press, they press it because that's what they really like to do. 
And then we have a, a text box here we call the cultivated, cultivated, which are sort of often the more well-educated well people who, who, who sort of uh, know a lot of things before they come, and they're actually there to to show what they to show their peers what they know and, and, and sort of appreciate the art a little bit more on, on a distance. Then we have the scanners, people walk in very quickly to get an overview and uh, and they don't read any text uh, and then they leave again. Um, and, and then we have the browsers who are mainly there because uh, they are there with their friends or family to have a good day out and, and they also if there's something to set the flicker for them. This is, of course, a very uh, superficial model when I just talk like this, but it's a very good way of thinking our audiences, and it's a good way of, of structuring the, 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 the exhibitions we do. Um, yeah, <coughs> so, so how are we going to uh, measure the results of the exhibition? Well, let's take this to evaluate. Uh, we're going to make a lot of observations in social media. We're quite uh, excited to see what's going to happen there. Are people actually going to share these uh, Facebook updates with their, uh, with their exhibitions? Um, we are also sending out email questionnaires uh, to the participants, and then we're going to have some, uh, some qualitative interviews with the uh, selected uh, <coughs> Uh, just curious, how are you going to make people choose to use the app? Well, it was, it's free choice. Yeah, but, but how are you going to make people actually download it and it's use it? It's not an app. It's not an app. It's not an app? No. no. Oh, I thought yet. it was an app. Oh. No, no, no. It's, in, it's actually when you have been curating within the, the actual uh, exhibition, mm -hmm. then you uh, then on your screen there's a, there's a okay, so you like us. Ah, yeah. Okay. yeah. yeah. This is, you walk around in the museum and, and, and do that. That leads to the other question. How are you going to encourage people to share? But that's the that's that's what you are that's the idea is or the, the theory is anyway, that as long as when you when you catch people when they are engaged, they, mm -hmm. they might share. But then also we are sending home a link because all the exhibitions all the exhibitions people are making will be shown on the website. Yeah. So we send a link home to each and every one of those. And then when they come home, they will have this nice little letter. Thank you for visiting platform. We hope you enjoyed it. Uh, this is a link to your uh, exhibition. You can share it if you want to. Um, okay. so. um, yeah. Well, I can give you some pointers to research about that. Yeah. Yes, please. I have a cheeky comment. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> just reminded me. Uh, I don't know if you remember uh, what was called the mouse trap. Uh, in, in the Experimentarium in yeah. Copenhagen, anybody, I don't know, mm -hmm. it was a science museum, they had this immersive uh, quest where the, the, the audience are visiting there, they enlisted on a mobile phone, and then they were led through the exhibitions, kind of curating their own tour, mm -hmm. and they thought they were in control until suddenly they get a call. And it's actually the curator calling them and saying, well, <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> and I was just thinking <laughs> that that might be a very interesting idea for you to yeah. contemplate. What, what are your own role? I mean, you're curating their curation in a way. No, we're curating well, the basis. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But, yeah. but that's true, yeah. because we're curating the basis, because we chose the 200 uh, art pieces that mm. they can look at. So in that respect, yes. But, but my point was yeah. actually the feedback. That could be an interesting way of, of well, provoking in a way the feedback, which is very active. We've done a positive feedback. Some when people uh, choose some art pieces, sometimes we as a creator put out uh, a small comment if uh, this painting goes exactly, precisely well with this uh, vase or anything. A, a little uh, comment will pop up digital uh, where a creator will mention. Why this is a good choice, but we and made an interesting choice. Interesting because choice. that was another of the yeah. discussion. And how how far can you go? We, we don't want not to good or bad. It's, it's not good or bad. It's, it's interesting. Yeah. But maybe we should have uh, made more provocative. Uh, well, if you're empowered, you can actually also use that empowerment. <laughs> 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 
So I mean, that's the, I mean, we call each other curators, and that's what the game is about. So maybe it's that, I mean, it's just a, a way to, to think further into the game of curation, but you actually also give them a sense of how they're choosing and why. I mean, you're part of it. Yeah. Um, I think it's such a wonderful democratic thing that you're doing. You know, the collection belongs to the people. It's wonderful. But I was wondering how it... I can put my hands up. Sorry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> will, will this affect your future collecting policies? Know, knowing what the people want, will this... Will, will curators see that acquisition control as well? It might do. We have done uh, some exhibitions earlier where, where we said our guests uh, choose vote which art pieces were their favorites and and we know this and we use it when we make our exhibitions but i i don't know if we'll use it i mean will you find that you'll need i don't know and yet another jacket and chair because it keeps on coming up to mm. go on display every single i don't know i think i for me it'd be that chair obviously but, but well worried. because of conservation reasons well suddenly mm -hmm. because things are so popular mm. we need to have a duplicate to um, yeah, okay. the conservation agency. Yes, please. Um, do you get? Do you know uh, what is then these curators who do it? Uh, these uh, citizen curators. Do they leave a name or some information, or are they just? Yeah, they people? they leave their name and uh, they get the possibility to write titles. Uh, and small comment if they will. Okay. We have a name. How do you know it's a real name? It, it, does, it doesn't matter if it's a real name. Okay, okay, but it's just the point that uh, yeah. know that, okay, it is done by a young guy or old mm -hmm. woman or whatever. Yeah, it might actually, be interesting for you. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, but there's actually a photo shoot or photo box in the exhibition. That's a real discovery. You can see that. Yeah, <laughs> Yeah. When can I do that at home after my visit to your museum? Yeah, well that's step two because we haven't done that at yet. But, but we are talking about making it. Mm -hmm. This small bonus thing for the mouse trap was part of the dream project. Yes, it was. So, <laughs> so you, can, you, can, you can gain knowledge about it if you go to our website. Yes. Yeah. Is that actually 10 years old now? Nah, I'm not that old. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not from part of that group. I'm part of any younger group. <laughs> I think it's yeah, it's around there. But yeah. Actually, we're all looking forward to see the results after you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for all your questions. I would like to.